So to start off this new year in the best way possible, my very first video of the year is going to be about this very interesting gaming monitor right here. So this is the Aorus FI27QX. And even though it sounds very similar to the FI27Q non-X from last year, they are actually quite different. So it's still a 27 inch monitor with a Quad HD resolution, but this time around it has a completely new IPS panel with a refresh rate of 240 Hertz. So this is one of the first IPS monitors on the market that combines a high resolution with a really high refresh rate. Which means, if you want a very fast IPS screen, you don't have to settle for 1080p anymore. Now next to that, it also focuses heavily on image quality and features. And as you will see later in this review, it's one of the best gaming monitors when it comes to color performance. So if we take that in consideration, along with its high resolution and a very high refresh rate, this very gaming oriented monitor should also be a very capable option for creators as well. But all good things come with a price. Now, I don't have the exact details quite yet, but I did hear some rumors that it will be around 750 euros excluding VAT. So I expect it to be around $800 in the US or around 900 euros with taxes in most EU countries. But you know, this is just guessing. We will have to wait and see what the real price will be when they get to the actual shops. But first, let's see how it performs and if they manage to pull off a perfect all-arounder. Let's go. This video is brought to you by Corsair and their K60 RGB Pro. This affordable mechanical keyboard comes with Cherry's brand new super smooth viola switches, a nice aluminum finish and of course a bunch of RGB. Check it out using the links in the description below. When you just look at the monitor, you can see why they kept the same name. The design hasn't changed at all, but it's also not a bad thing as it's a very sturdy and a very well-built monitor. It has a completely metal stand that doesn't take an unnecessary amount of space on your desk. And I really like that it looks pretty clean and pretty simple from the front. So, you know, it won't look off in a professional environment either. It is also a flat monitor, which I know a lot of you prefer over a curved model. And I personally belong to that group as well, as I really think that a curve doesn't really add much to a 27 inch display. Now you do get a little bit more of a gamey design and a bit of RGB in the back of the monitor, but it's a small detail and not something that will light up the wall behind. I don't mind it. If you do, you can turn it off, but I also don't think it serves much of a purpose as you will most likely never see it. But hey, you know, it's there and if you need to show it off, you can. The stand offers a good range of flexibility. There's plenty of height adjustment. You can swivel it, you can tilt it, you can rotate it vertically. And if you want to, you can also vase mount it as well. When it comes to connections, you get one DisplayPort 1.4 connection, two HDMI 2.0 connections, a USB hub, and analog audio connections for both a headset and a microphone, but there are no speakers built in. Now keep in mind, to be able to experience all that this monitor has to offer, you will have to use the DisplayPort connections because sadly, they did not go for HDMI 2.1. Now the OSD control is pretty straightforward and you handle everything with a small joystick on the bottom of the panel, or you can use the software package to control all the settings with your mouse instead, which I think has become a standard feature on all Gigabyte monitors so far, and it's a very useful one to have in my opinion. Next to the pretty regular options, the OSD includes some handy gaming features as well, like an on-screen crosshair that you can even design yourself, uh, some contrast enhancers, and you know, just gaming enhancers in general that are made to help you be better in games pretty much. Now, I personally don't use any of them, but it's the usual stuff that you will see on many gaming monitors these days. Now, one more interesting thing is that this new panel is made by Sharp. And even though they make a lot of panels, they never really competed in this high-end gaming segment. So it was quite interesting to see it in action. And I have to say right out of the box, it did really great. I've always been uh, quite fond of fast 27 inch Quad HD monitors with IPS panels because 
There's really nice balance between speed, uh, image quality and sharpness and you get a very good all-arounder that is great for gaming but also for productivity and this monitor here just combines the best of both worlds. When it comes to speed, uh, I compared it to a couple of monitors I have here. Uh, the 170 hertz monitor from Gigabyte with a Quad HD resolution which would be the highest refresh rate you could go to with this resolution until now and the 280 hertz and a 360 hertz full hd monitors from asus uh, which are some of the fastest monitors on the market currently and because there is more to speed than just uh, refresh rate and response time claims i wanted to see how they actually compare in the real world when you put them side by side Compared to a 170 Hz monitor, which is just a tad above the usual 144 and 165 Hz options that, you know, people will most likely upgrade from, the difference is definitely noticeable and it is definitely an upgrade. Now, compared to the 280 Hz tough gaming monitor, I did not notice that much of a difference in speed between them, but you can clearly see that the Aorus is sharper due to its high resolution. Even compared to the 360Hz ROG, which is considered to be the fastest gaming monitor you can buy, the difference is really small and you would only be able to see it if you actually had both and put them side by side. Now the 360Hz is faster, but the 240Hz is not much behind. But while speed is great, I do think that the image quality is still the most important factor for many people, especially if you also like to play games that aren't as competitive. And this is where this monitor really shines. And I'm not talking just about high resolution here. The color performance is just fantastic. It offers a complete Adobe RGB color gamut and over 90% DCI-P3 gamut, which is 156% of the typical sRGB color range, which is you know more than most professional photo and video monitors will offer, and even more than the LG 38GN950 I recently bought for myself. Now, color accuracy right out of the box is excellent as well, with practically perfect results to, to the point that I had to ask Gigabyte if this is actually a mass production model or they just sent me a perfect golden review sample, but they actually did confirm that this is a retail unit, so the results you see in this video should be what you should expect if you decide to go for one of these. Now, other results are generally excellent as well. Uh, brightness is very good at 436 nits and the white balance was near perfect. The uniformity on my model was pretty much great as well. Uh, again, showing results that you would consider good if this was a professional monitor for creators, not to mention a gaming monitor. Now, there was barely any backlight bleed. And of course, since this is an IPS panel, the viewing angles are great. The only result that should be considered disappointing, which is pretty much the weakness of every IPS panel, is the contrast. 992 to 1 is nowhere near perfect, but luckily for Gigabyte, their only Quad HD 240Hz uh, IPS competitor right now is Alienware, and they use LG's Nano IPS panels, which generally have an even lower contrast ratio, so you know, it's all about perspective. And I think it does come down to personal preference. Now, I don't think there is a problem with a contrast of 1000 to 1. And I think both this one and my LG look completely fine in the dark. But if all you do is game in a super dark room, you should probably just look into a VA or even better, an OLED panel instead. Now, in my opinion, this mediocre contrast doesn't change the fact that this is really one of the nicest gaming panels I've ever seen, uh, both in terms of speed and image quality. But it's not all sunshine, lollipops and rainbows either. There are definitely some downsides and some things that they still need to improve on that I want to mention today. And the first one on the list is the HDR. A Display HDR 400 label on this monitor doesn't really mean much. Uh, it's gonna take the HDR signal, but with a peak brightness of 430 nits, uh, with no proper local dimming and with a less than average contrast at best, this is not a real HDR monitor. If you're looking for a good HDR experience, you want to see at least an HDR 600 label or ideally an HDR 1000 one. Now, another feature that just isn't that great is their anti-motion blur mode called Aim Stabilizer. 
Now, first of all, it will not work at all if you have adaptive sync enabled and this monitor has FreeSync Premium and it is G-Sync compatible and I had no problems in quite a few games I played on it with an NVIDIA GPU. So that part is working you know, perfectly. And if you want this aim stabilizer, you will have to turn it off and re-embrace that terrible screen tearing. Second, it limits the brightness to 180 nits, which might be just enough for gaming at night when it's really dark, but it's definitely too dim to game in even a lightly lit room. And third, it just doesn't look that great because it adds some ghosting to the mix. So even though some movements might look a little bit sharper, the ghosting, the screen tearing and an extremely low brightness make it completely unusable in my opinion. Now the best thing would be to just turn it off and pretend you know it's not even there. And the last thing I want to complain a bit about is not really an issue with the monitor itself but with some of the choices that Gigabyte keeps making and a great example of that is the active noise cancellation feature for your microphone. So if you connect your microphone to the back of your monitor, there's this little microphone here under the logo and the monitor uses that microphone to cancel out some of the background noise around you, which sounds great in theory, but the results are pretty uneven and very uninteresting and it only works with microphones with a separate analog out. Uh, now, they've been pushing this same feature since their very first monitor, the AD27QD, and considering the fact it didn't get any more interesting since then, I would rather see them, you know, just drop it completely and push for a lower price point instead. That would be nice. And I slightly disagree with using the same name as the last year's model. Uh, it is the same chassis, that is true, but it is a completely different panel, which makes it a completely different product. Uh, adding just an X at the end of an old name made me think it's just yet another revision, not a completely new panel. And I think a fresh new name would have made, you know, a larger impact. But overall, I have to admit, I'm very impressed with this thing. If you put the HDR and the aim stabilizer aside and you just pretend they don't exist, it is a fantastic monitor. It has an excellent build quality, a bag full of features. It is fast and the image quality and color reproduction are exceptional. And not to mention the fact that this combination of high resolution and a very high refresh rate is still very unique. I mean, so far there is only one other monitor on the market that offers the same thing, but these things also make it very expensive, especially when you compare it to slightly slower Quad HD IPS alternatives that have become pretty cheap nowadays. So if you take Gigabyte's own M27Q, for example, with 170 Hz refresh rate and a pretty excellent panel as well, it will cost you 330 euros here in the Netherlands, which sounds very tempting for a good all-arounder. But if you also like those eSports titles uh, and you really want an even higher refresh rate on your Quad HD screen and you are prepared to pay a bit more for it, this FI27QX is definitely worth it. Anyhow, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel to never miss an upload. Bye bye and see you in the next one.